doubt. Honest doubt. Nathaniel, he wanted to know how could it be that the carpenter's son, Joseph's son, had come. He had that desire for a Messiah. But come on, Jesus? Jesus, he didn't meet Nathaniel's expectations. You see, there's this deep rooted, not a deep, very deep rooted desire in all of us for peace, whether it's a peace of mind, whether it's just, Lord, just let, just give me a break, right? There's this deep desire of a heart that can just rest and not be tossed to and fro. There's a deep desire for peace in the lives of other people around us. Um, Wednesday night, I sat in a basement, a cold basement, of a building with the chief of police, two other pastors, and some other community leaders who, who they were not Christians at all. And the question, the topic that was put before us is how do we bring peace in our city? And you can see, as you looked around the room, there was just this despair. Everyone in that room was there, wanted to see peace. Couldn't believe that a 23-year-old man, life, been taken. Leon Wilson Jr. killed by gunshots in our city. You see, there's this, this deep rooted desire in everyone in that room for peace, and even in this room for peace. There's this deep desire in all of us uh, to live in a world of justice where men and men and women, children, everyone's equal, right? Uh, there's just, uh, just lawyers, just politicians, just justice. We want to see justice every day. There's a, this deep rooted inside of us. There's this deep feeling for love, real love. Love that's unconditional. Doesn't, doesn't care about what I've done. Doesn't care about my past. It's not a, a shame to walk with me and call me brother or a friend. And so there's this, there's this ex expectation in all of us for something better than this world because there has to be something more than this. Would you not agree? Yes. Do you not feel that? Yes. Well, see, the reason you feel that it's because God has placed eternity in your heart. Ecclesiastes 3.11. God has set eternity into man's heart. That's why you feel like that. That's why you desire that. So there's an expectation for God and for the kingdom of true peace and love and joy. But that's a desire for the kingdom of God. But instead of turning to Jesus... We respond like Nathaniel with doubt. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? He isn't the one. He doesn't meet my expectations. So I'll try good works. I'll try harder. I'll try other people. This, this relationship will save me. This philosophy will save me. Some said in that room when we were, as I was in there with the police chief, that if we want to bring peace to Fitchburg, what we need to do is everyone needs to meet and talk with each other, and then we'll see more peace. Listen, I'm not a detective, but I'm sure Leon was shot by someone he knows. You see what I'm saying? It's not that we don't know each other. It's not the answer. The answer is a changed heart by Jesus. And then those people going into the city, introducing Jesus, and hey, come and see Jesus. Come and see Jesus. Changing hearts, and it's spreading. That's the answer. But like Nathaniel, we all turn back, we turn away from the one we've been waiting for. Jesus Christ is the only one that can fulfill us, he can fulfill those deep desires that we have for peace, love, and justice. He's the only one that can do it. And it's so sad. Because even though we will, though the pastors in that room will say, it's Jesus Christ, we need to, we need to do this and that, we will, so many people will say, no, I'm going to try something different. And we're going to get the same results. And we're going to turn around and we're going to blame it on the sun and it being hot. And that is why Leon is dead. Let's look at how Philip responds to Nathaniel. Nathaniel, Philip, he doesn't get into any theological debates with Nathaniel. He doesn't, he doesn't kidnap him. He doesn't try to drag him into the kingdom. And he, he loves him too much to do that. Also, Philip, Philip really believes this. He, he believes that Jesus is the Messiah. Um, 
there's passion. He immediately goes to Nathaniel. So all, you know, he doesn't have to have a, a full theology. Here's what he says. He says, come and see Jesus. Come and see the man that has changed the direction of my life. I am no longer Philip from the village of fishermen. I am not Philip, the fisher of men. Come and see who did that. So Nathaniel, he goes to see Jesus in doubt. And Jesus sees him and says, an Israelite indeed who has no deceit, a sincere doubt of heart, a heart tired of being sick and tired, tired of waiting for something more. And Nathaniel says to Jesus, how do you even know me? And Jesus responds, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. But then you answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Sounds like Jeremiah 1 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you a prophet to the nations. So here in our text, what we see is the divine side of salvation and this human side of salvation really just come together. Jesus found Philip. Philip found Nathaniel. Nathaniel comes to Jesus. But actually, Jesus found Philip. And Jesus found Nathaniel, revealing his supernatural power to Nathaniel. I don't know what Nathaniel was doing under that fig tree. I don't know what he was studying. But Jesus' words touch Nathaniel's heart. And he sees that Jesus is the one we've been waiting for. And see, this is salvation. Jesus pursues us, opens our eyes, enlightens us. Those who are asleep are now awakened. They are now woke to his infinite power and his infinite glory. And we believe and we confess that Jesus is the Messiah. But not just that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus is now the Lord of my life. As Nathaniel says, you are the King of Israel. Christian, why is all of any of this good news? You watch the news, all right? You, you see the darkness, right? Yes. You, you hear the cries of mothers and fathers who have lost sons and daughters to needless violence. If you haven't, come hang out with me for a week. Yeah. You've experienced deep hurt yourself, all right? You understand the foolery of the people we see on TV trying to bring in a kingdom of love and justice without the God of love and justice, right? You see the deep despair for something more in every person you meet. And you have the answer. You know the answer for the doubt that people have, for their pain, for their longing, the satisfaction that Jesus is the one you've been waiting for and has already come and he's coming back. You know that. You have that truth. You know he's already overcome darkness with light. We're supposed to be ambassadors of that truth. That there's actually real hope that you can trust in. So why don't we? Why don't we? Why don't we like Philip go immediately to our friends and family and the people around us with the gospel of hope that the Messiah is coming and he's coming back? I, I think we see some of it in this text. Maybe it's fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. Fear that someone will reject your message or place doubt, ask you a question you can't answer. I'm telling you, if you proclaim Jesus long enough and witness long enough, you're going to run into all of those situations. Amen. But that's okay. When fear tries to stop you, I want you to remember Philip. He wouldn't be considered much of an apologist by our standards, would he? All that brother had was come and see Jesus. And he did some great evangelism, actually, if you look into it. He first used what he knew Nathaniel would care about to point Jesus to point Nathaniel to Jesus, he used the Old Testament scriptures. You see, you need to kill your fear of speaking truth to people by remembering that all people have eternity in their heart. So all people have cares and concerns and something they're going through. Every single person that you meet, Jesus will never meet his match. You will never bring someone to Jesus that Jesus is like, guys, we got to have a meeting. Trinity, hold up. I don't know what's going on with this person. This, their life is all messed up. I don't know. I've never seen this before. That will never happen. All right? You have it. Hasn't he shown up in your life? Hasn't he removed some mountains, some storms? Come on. We got 
cancer survivors in here. We got all types of stuff in here right now. I'm about to start this testimony thing where everyone gives their testimony. Three minutes, all right? <laughs> and we're going to hear, the Lord's really impressing to hear the testimonies in this room that God has brought you guys through. In our fears for witnessing, we must remember that God pursues before us. So there may be rejection, yes, but think about this. Think about all the people that will receive Jesus. If we have faith in Jesus and His Spirit that is working in us, we have to believe that we can just walk into somebody's life, tell them about Jesus, and they will receive Jesus. We have to believe that's true and that will happen. Maybe it's lack of satisfaction in Jesus. I mean, Jesus, Philip was satisfied. He didn't argue with Nathaniel. He didn't ignore Nathaniel's sincere questioning. He just said, come and see. Come and see what Jesus has did in my life. Are, are you <laughs> satisfied with Jesus Christ? Is there some type of lack of satisfaction? Are the cares of this world a, a barrier to your relationship with God? I mean, how are you going to tell people to come to Jesus if you don't trust them? So is it fear of rejection? Is it lack of satisfaction? Is it lack of passion? Philip finds Nathaniel. Are, are we too busy for, for other things? I mean, God, here's God's plan. Is that the joy of our salvation lead to thanksgiving, which will lead to a passion to live like Jesus. If you're in life group, this is what we've been watching. Uh, Eric, right? He, he, he finds, well, he actually, what happens is his, um, his wife and his family, he has a heart attack. I don't want to tell you all the movies. I want you to come to life group. But I actually have a movie on DVD if you want to see it. But what is what happened? His whole, he has a heart attack. Boom, he's on his bed. I can't remember if he receives Christ before or when it happened. But it was the greatest day of his life. He uh, comes out of that. He starts selling all this stuff. He starts like just acting crazy. Wife doesn't understand what's family. He's like, what's wrong with him? His dad doesn't understand what's wrong with him. That is what is happening with Eric. Is it not? If you're in a life group, that's what's happening with Eric. It's a new life. He's like, man, I got to make time for Jesus. I'm like, there's new things I need to be doing. It's Thanksgiving. But the point is that. The reason he's selling all this stuff and all of this is because he's making room to do more things and bring more people to Christ. That is the difference between a fan and a follower. So I think it could be fear of rejection, lack of satisfaction, lack of passion, but I think the major one that we're seeing across the field in the lives of many saints is a lack of compassion. Look at our last section, verse 49 through 51. Nathaniel answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? Oh, you will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Philip and Nathaniel did see greater things. That as they walked along with Jesus, they saw him. They saw who Jesus was. They saw him through miracles. They saw him through wonders. Um, they saw truth. And it really confirmed more and more, that he, more and more that he was the Son of God. They saw greater things. And this is what happens to all of us as we walk longer with Jesus. We see greater things. We see that he is the Son of God. Uh, we start to trust him more as he draws us closer to him. But here's where the lack of compassion comes in. Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. We first see this phrase, this, this, this statement, um, the angels of God ascending and descending, dealing with, in the Old Testament, with Jacob. Maybe you've heard of Jacob's ladder. Jacob falls asleep and he has a dream. Genesis 28, 12, and he dreamed and behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. So we'll look at both verses side by side. John 1, John, Genesis 28, 12, and John 1, 51. The mystery in the Old Testament is revealed in the New Testament. The latter is replaced with the Son of Man. The Son of Man is Jesus. About 80 times he refers to himself throughout the New Testament asked the Son of Man. Okay, so I hope you understand. Jesus is the latter. Jesus is the mystery of Jacob's dream. What does that have to do with compassion? If Jesus is the latter, what that means is that Jesus is the link between heaven and earth. So spiritual knowledge is through Jesus Christ. The Spirit is the Lord and it works in our hearts. 
But get this, if Jesus is the link between heaven and earth, that means Jesus is the link between God and man. Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. If your family member or your friend or your co-worker, whoever dies without receiving Jesus Christ, his offer of salvation, they're never going to find that peace that they were looking for. They're not in a better place. They are separated from God in hell. That is the purpose of the latter. There, Jesus is the only way. He's the only way. God the Father will take no other payment. No payment of good works. He's not going to take your, a payment of good intentions when you stand in front of him. Only the blood that was offered for all who come and see that he is good. Do you take that seriously? That is the lack of compassion. Because if you took that seriously, if I took that seriously, I would go like Philip all the time, every day, daily. I would not hold back. You know, Philip, he went to his one. Andrew, he went to his one, which was Peter, the Samaritan woman. She goes and gets a whole town and brings them back to Jesus. You tell people don't follow me, follow Jesus like John the Baptist. He did that. So my question is, who is your one? Who is your one? Who do you know that needs to hear this message today of salvation? Just real life, more than anything this world can have offer. Who needs to hear that in your life? I want you to, if you're a Christian, I want you to take that seriously. Because when we look at these Christians in the Bible who know Jesus, they go to their one immediately. As we're praying, I want you to ask the Lord to reveal someone to you today. And I, I hope that the Lord will fill you with so much compassion for that person that you would call them today. I mean, tell them Jesus is he's come, he's coming back. Um, what Jesus has done in your life, come and see. Come and see that he is good. As you're praying, really request that from your Father. And from those who are here and they, they, you feel that deep despair, I, I know some of you here do, Leon. You feel that despair of hope, of hopelessness, um, that there's something more in this world. Yet when presented with Jesus Christ, maybe you, you've rejected him and you think there's another way. I'm going to read this and then I'll close to you. Isaiah 53, 1 through 6. Isaiah 53, 1 through 6, and it reads, Who has believed what he has heard from us. And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? There's that sovereignty again. For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form of majesty that we would look at him, no beauty that we would desire him. He was despised and rejected by men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hid their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions and he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace and with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, and we have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. What I want you to get from that is there are many fake imposters that are going to try to deceive you all week that they are the one you've been waiting for. Don't miss the real one. Don't miss the one you've been waiting for. You need to trust in the Lord. Trust in Jesus, the name that has been trusted on since the beginning of time, from Adam to now, who has remained faithful throughout history. All the despair and hurt are just symptoms of a bigger problem that we live in a sinful world and there's sin in our hearts. And God hates sin. And that justice that you desire, he's going to bring it. But he's going to bring it against sin as well as in your life. And so if you hear him today, don't reject him. Don't reject the only one that can save you from the wrath to come. Receive him. Receive him today. Come and see that he is good. 
that he is here now pursuing you. That's why you're probably even here. They call Jesus the hound of heaven. I like that. He goes before us and he says, I'll show you greater things. But you have to receive him. And so what I want you to do is I want us, just as I close out, for us to bow our heads and I do this thing where I talk a little bit and then I pray. I know we have some saints here who proclaim it in Christ's name, claim it, claim raised in Christ, sons of the kings. So I want to just talk to us and I want to talk to those who may not, do not know the Lord. Father, for those here who know you, I, I hope that the truth of your pursuit of our hearts that it would stir up a pursuit within us for more of you. I hope that the love that you have for us would provoke us to pursue more of you each day. I hope that the truth that you pursue us fills us with humility so much that it leads us to become passionate, compassionate, and content workers for your kingdom. And Lord, I ask that you would lay someone's name in our minds right now that does not know you or your salvation. That we would write it down, that we would pray, that we would pursue. That we would join you in mission with that, after that person. Father, I ask for comfort and salvation to all who are mourning the loss of Leon Wilson Jr. May his death not just be another statistic, Lord. May you get glory out of this tragedy uh, somehow. And for anyone who hasn't trusted in Jesus, I hope that you got from the message that there is a place where you can lay down your burdens at the feet of Jesus. That you can come and see that the Lord is sufficient for your, your deepest yearnings that you can receive him before it's too late because tomorrow isn't promised and that you can actually receive him now and if you believe in your heart that Jesus is the son of God that was sin and died for all of your sins and my sins that is the first step all our sins need to be accounted for because Jesus paid for our sins with his blood all of our sins not just some of them all of them and you can't pay that debt. You gotta believe that God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. And you ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins. And you will be saved, and Jesus comes into your life and He shows you greater things. His Holy Spirit would enter your life, and then you will experience life. If anyone would like to receive him now, you can do that right in your seat. I'm going to make you come down here. I'm going to make you raise your hand. But I will, I will coach you a little bit. You can say this, God, I'm a sinner. And I'm asking you that you forgive me of my sins. I believe you sent your son Jesus to die for my sins. And I believe Jesus rose three days later paying my debt. Jesus, come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. If anyone did that or would like to do that, please come see me after. If anybody wants to do that or more questions about what I talked about today, come see me after. Don't rush out of here. Let me finish this prayer. Father, continue to pursue us in a deeper fellowship with you. Continue to use us in the city to see lives changed, eyes open to your infinite glory and power and worth, God. I thank you for being faithful, for sending your Son, the Messiah, that you kept your word, but we don't. God, we love you. We thank you, Lord. And we ask that you go before us before we talk to our one who needs to know, who needs to know you. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen.